I'm gonna take a big golf cart battery and I'm gonna plug it into this power station even though the power station does not have an expansion battery port. But if that's not enough, I'm also gonna charge that golf cart battery up at the same time off utility power. So we're gonna plug in a charger, charge up the battery, plug the battery into the power station to provide that power to the power station. If that's not enough, I'm also gonna hook the power station up to utility power itself. But wait, I need to beat this power station up, so I'm gonna first drain this power station with my ceramic heater, my 1200 watt ceramic heater, and drain this thing right down to zero, folks. I'm gonna kill this power station first. It's gonna get hot. It's not gonna like it. It's gonna work hard. And then we're gonna throw everything we can at it to charge it back up. And through that process, I'm gonna tell you how efficient this power station is. And we'll talk about some features and we'll see, can it take all that abuse? Stick around, let's find out. Power stations have really come a long way over the last several years. I remember buying my first power station. Well, that was four years ago. Now, if you've watched my channel at all, you know that I've reviewed a lot of power stations. But one of the challenges that I have is I've got a bad back. So when Dabson reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in testing and reviewing their Dabson 2000L power station, which is brand new, frankly, I jumped at it. But there's some reasons why. One of my criticisms of 2000 watt hour power stations is that they're pretty much just too heavy for me. I've been told that I really shouldn't lift over about 30 pounds. So 55 pound or 60 pound or even just over 50 pound power stations, I shouldn't be carrying those around. And the first thing I noticed with the Dabson 2000L is that it only weighs 41 pounds, but it's got a 2200 watt inverter. So not only does it have 2000 watt hours or 2048, but it's got a 2200 watt inverter. And with their P-Boost technology, that inverter can actually deliver more than 3000 watts of power. Now this one has semi-solid state LiFePo4 batteries. It's capable of being discharged 100% 4,000 times, which would still leave it at 80% of its total capacity. It also has surge protection and it can act as a UPS. And let's face it, over 70% of America's power grids are past their end of life. So power outages have become kind of a normal thing. Having a power station that you can use to provide power to freezers, refrigerators, computers, internet, CPAP machines, whatever, it's kind of a good thing to have. And one that only weighs 41 pounds, but has just over 2000 watt hours, not a bad deal. Now, the other thing about these Dabsons is that they've got a really good Bluetooth app. And since I already had that app, because I got a couple other Dabson power stations that I actually use and like, it was really easy for me to add the Dabson 2000L to my list of power stations that the app runs. And that allows me certain functionality that I find really quite nice. Now this has several features that I really like. First of all, it's got six 120 volt outlets. This unit can take 800 watts of solar. It's got four USB ports, two A's and two C's. One of the C's is a 100 watt port. It's got a four amp 12 volt type port, the little barrel style. It also has your typical cigarette lighter type port. It has a light. A lot of these units don't come with lights anymore. This one does. Now I like the design of it. It's got two strong handles, so it's easy to carry around. And on the reverse side or the back side, it has your typical power cord type connector, which is the simple type that I kind of like personally. And it also has a car charger with an XT60. And you can use that XT60 port to get up to 800 watts of solar with a solar panel. I like that. So before we get into anything more on this unit, the first thing I want to do is drain it all the way down to zero. So today what I'm gonna do, despite how warm it is in here, I'm gonna hook up a heater and I'm gonna drain this unit down. Now that heater uses about 1150 watts of power. So we'll see how much it draws. So we're gonna find out how well it does that. And then once it's completely drained, we'll charge it back up and I'll show you the app in use during my testing as well. So let's get set up. Let's plug in a heater and let's drain this sucker all the way down, folks. So we got the 2000L, we'll click on that one and it'll give us our output. Well, look at that, 1162. Wow, folks. It's showing that we've got an hour and a half to go before it's fully drained. So I'm, I'm of course not gonna have you sit here for an hour and a half and watch me look at it. These apps do allow some adjustment here so I can go in, do my charge and discharge settings so I can change my charge speed currently at 800, I could change, or 700, sorry, I can change it to 800. So we can go to 1500, um, let's go ahead and set it at 1500 this way, might as well. 
Now, one of the things I've noticed with the Dabson power stations is that if I hook solar up to it, then it will actually prioritize solar. So it'll dial down the AC charging to get to that 1500 watts with a maximum of 800 on solar. So you should see 700 coming in off AC and 800 off solar if you've got enough solar panels. So that's kind of important. I really like that feature because it tends to lean on the sun. And you know, if you're running a power station, even if you've got utility power, well, why not use the sun and save a few bucks charging up your power station? One thing I like about this app, it's very, very easy to use very quick once you have it installed i've not had a single issue with this and that's saying something folks because i'm an old guy that don't like using apps a whole lot <laughs> but it's very very handy all right so we are well i just saw 1167 watts so that thing is really cranking out the power i love seeing that folks it's not something i'm used to seeing on power stations so big plus on the dabson that it's actually giving me the kind of power that i need to run this ceramic heater of all things. I'll be back to you as soon as this thing is just about fully drained. It's a little warm on top. I did hear the fan run a couple times. We went 1953 watt hours in one hour and 40 minutes. Our maximum wattage that we pulled off the unit was 1181 watts. An efficiency of 95 0.36%. I have found on these Dabson power stations that they are really efficient, folks. 95% efficient is really, really high. A lot of power stations I've tested in this 2000 watt hour range were in that 80 to 85%. So to have one run at 95 plus percent, that's pretty good. But I have noticed that on these Dabson power stations, they seem to be far more efficient than a lot of the less expensive power stations. So that's pretty impressive. I also noticed that the fan actually ran a little while after it shut down. So it killed the inverter, even though it showed 0% left, it actually ran the fan a little bit. So we ran 1181 watts and we ran that for 1.4 hours. That's actually pretty good, folks. Now you might ask, how long can this run a 1000 watt air conditioner or 1100 watt air conditioner? Well, there's your answer, about 1.4 hours. But I wouldn't recommend running an air conditioning unit on this unless you had a soft start on it. And I've spoken to Dabson and that's what they tell me. They tell me that due to the heavy load that air conditioners draw when they start up and the compressor starts running, you should have a soft start on them. Otherwise they can draw as they put it up to seven times the rated wattage of the unit at start. That's really, really high. So, if you're going to run like a wall banger that draws a thousand watts off this, you should run it with a salt, uh, with a soft start. And actually what they told me was even an 8,000 BTU, I call them wall bangers, you know, the kind of air conditioners you put in a window, they should have soft start on them because that's a lot easier on the high frequency inverters in these power stations. And that goes for all power stations, folks. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hook up a battery to it that fits within the solar input on it. Now, one of the things about solar inputs is that they're always rated at a maximum voltage. And this unit here, I believe is rated at 60 volts. That's pretty high. Now the test that I'm gonna run next, we've already got it plugged into the wall. It's drawing a bunch of power. It can draw 1500 watts on fast charge. Input's currently just over 1000 watts. I'm gonna plug a battery into it. And one of the things I'm gonna do when I plug the battery into it is I'm gonna leave the battery connected to a wall charger. <laughs> okay, folks, I've got my 52.1 volt golf cart battery hooked up to the Dabson 2000L to its solar input port and I am getting currently from solar 729 watts and it was climbing and I'm only pulling three well 250 off of the wall I'm actually getting 800 now just went to 800 watts 250 off the wall I'm actually charging it up with a battery through the solar port as well as through utility power and I've got a charger running on the battery at the same time so this unit has surge protection it can function as an uninterrupted power supply. It's 95% efficient, which is actually really, really good. And I got that while running the app. So it was actually providing some power to the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which means that 95.3, whatever it was, percentage that I was getting in efficiency is actually slightly higher than that. We'll call it 95.4% efficient. 
That's excellent, folks. And it can run a heavy draw like that 1180 watt heater that I was running continuously without issue. Did it get warm? Well, it's about 75 degrees in here and it was 109 degrees on its internal thermometer. So, I mean, that's to be expected. It's really not that noisy under full charge at 109 degrees. So I'm impressed with that. It's very efficient. It only weighs 41 pounds. Now it will take 1500 watts of AC charging. So off a utility or a generator or 1500 watts of solar and AC charging combined. All right, folks, real quick, after I let the power station cool down a little bit, because it was actually very, very close to the maximum temperature. I mean, I really tried to melt this machine down, but once I let it cool down, I finally saw it bump up right up next to 1500 Watts. It was like 1470s right around there. So we're getting it. We had to let it cool down a little bit. Now there's one other thing on the Dabsons that I do not see on other power stations. And that is this. The watt meter on the wall very, very closely matches what the Dabson is telling me. If it says 1470 and I look over at the wall, the wall's talking 1472. So, I mean, they're within about 10 watts of each other, but usually right on the money or very, very close. So I'm really impressed with that. I've never seen that before. I always assumed that it was the other power stations were just using up more of that power. And maybe they were, maybe they were just inefficient or maybe their meters aren't very good. But the Dabsons, top notch folks. I'm more impressed with this unit and all the other Dabsons that I've got, the more I use them. Good stuff. You can check it out with the links I dropped down below. And I wanna take a moment to thank my members. I really appreciate your being here and supporting the channel. It keeps me motivated, keeps me working hard to get more content out for everyone. Don't go away because right now there's a prime day deal between July 8th and July 11th going on for these Dabson 2000L power stations as well as their 1000s. I would check it out. I'm gonna drop a link down below on Amazon. I wanna say that these are about $550 right now. You can't beat that price. If you've seen my reviews on other power stations, you know that this Dabson 2000L at that price blows them all away. This is the one to have. So check it out on Amazon. This is your chance, folks. It's a great price. Thanks for watching.